Hello everyone, this is a walkthrough for the first revision exercise that you can find on Moodle. Here is the description, which you can find also <coughs> in the assignment. So, we have two inputs. We have a polyline and some kind of number, which will be the height of the canopy. And the procedure is quite clearly described. You have also um, at your disposal, there is also a step-by-step -step instruction in the form of images. So now I will try to convert that description and also those images into a grasshopper script. So we have to f start with a polyline P. So we need to input a curve to grasshopper and then we will find its vertices and translate them. Okay, let's let's just do it in Rhinos. So first we need to create a polyline. So I will draw some curve here. I will close it, because why not? And polyline is a kind of curve. So you need a curve data container to reference a polyline. So right click on the curve data container, set one curve, click on the polyline, and here you have it. Okay, so the first step that you need to do is you need to extract the vertices of a polyline. There are two ways in which you can do that, so let's um, try both of them. First, you can use explode, where is it? Explode curve. Okay, here. So explode curve and the other discontinuity. Um, explode will return all the segments of the curve and the vertices and discontinuity will find all points on a curve where the angle, the tangent vector is changing rapidly. That's that's what I can tell. So these are ev these are all the kinks um, on the curve. Discontinuity. What is the difference? The difference is that a polyline. It will be visible if you use point list component. A polyline If you have seven vertices here, this is how I would count them. Once again, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? But if you close the polyline, you add one more point which is coincident with the start point. So as you can see here in the po from the point list component, you get double doubled vertices. Actually, this is not double. This is what is exactly what you have in the polyline. So you so the starting point and ending point are the same while discontinuity is not uh, taking those into consideration. So um, discontinuity will uh, not give you duplicates of points. Of course, you could remove the duplicates from um, the explode component. There is a component for that, which is called call duplicates. I don't remember if it's if it is in maths or vector tab, probably vector. Yes point call duplicates and it will remove every duplicate point from the list so you could use this as well but I will for this exercise I will go with discontinuity so this is the first step I got the vertices let me get back to the description find vertices of a polyline okay I have that the next step translate vertices by a vector z equals to 0, 0, h. h is that number that we have as, an, uh, as the second input. So let's create that another input number. This will be height. And uh, let's create a slider with some sensible range. And now we need a vector. Uh, there are two ways. You can create a vector, vector xyz, and you could only fit, you can only attach um, that value to z component, or you could use a unit z vector 
it will work exactly the same. I would suggest if you are sure that you will always have a vector which is aligned with one of the axes, I would suggest using one of those. There are other axes as well, so unit x, unit y, unit z. So I will use unit z for that for that exercise. And now we want to move the objects. So here we are. We are moving the One moment. we are moving the vertices um, upwards. Uh, all right. Um, what's next? Let's see. Translate vertices. We have done that. Now find the center C of the polyline P, which might be an average of its vertices. Okay, you can find the center by averaging those vertices. Um, yeah, let's let's check this out. So you could either calculate an average of all the vertices, and this will be something close to the center point, but I suggest using polygon center. Center component. So polygon center gives you three different kinds of cent center points. One, the first one is something that we have calculated just a moment ago. It is an average of polyline vertices. Then we have the average of edges and average of uh, the whole shape, which is like a weight center as you can see they are they have different positions which is something you might expect okay let's pick the the one that looks the best i i, I think that this will be the last one yeah probably the center send weight, the weight center of the shape so let's use that so we have the step four find the center we have done it then create arcs with starting points at the point s where is the point s probably point c i think that this is the point c and these arcs have to be tangent to the world z axis and end in translated vertices okay so we start in c center point c those arcs have to be tangent to the world z-axis and end in those translated vertices let's let's find a proper component for that so curve tab primitive group and look for arcs you can construct an arc using um, multiple different ways and here we have only two points we have a starting point and the ending point but we also have one more information that the the arc should start so that it's tangent to the to the vertical axis there is a component for that it's called arc sed it is defined by start point end point and a tangent vector so as you uh, as as we read in this, the task description the starting point has to be the center so this is the center then the end points we have as the endpoints, we define those translated vertices, and the direction of the arc should be the z axis. So we can create another one. Of course, we don't have to. And well, here we are. Okay. So this is exactly what we wanted to get. Now let's see what is the last step. We, we are all already after that. And then step six, create a loft through the arcs. Use the loft component with settings closed loft and straight sections turned on. Okay, let's try that. So loft, great. Now I input those arcs, but as you can see, there is a gap here. So the end segment is not connected to the starting segment and also they are connected with a freeform curve and we prefer straight sections. So how do we change the options of a loft? Uh, of course you could 
look for loft options component somewhere uh, freeform loft options and set those separately but if you are sure of what you want to res uh, what you want to get then you can ad adjust those options here straight here you have to right click on those options go to loft options and then select from the menu so we want a closed loft and we want here in the first drop down we select we change from normal to straight and then we click on commit changes and here we are okay and this is the the end of this exercise so this is this shows you how you can create a simple canopy from a polyline quite simple but this is a revision of of the simplest geometric procedures so i'm i'm not putting that to a group because that script is so simple that it doesn't require anything like that so i will leave it in that form and thanks for watching hope that was understandable and see you in the next video.